Today we're going to look at formulas in geometry and that's specifically the area and perimeter of polygons. So at the top of the page I have a snapshot of the region's reference sheet. And as you can see for area we're only given the area formulas or you are for a triangle, parallelogram, and circle. Other formulas that you need to know but that are not on the reference sheet, okay, are that of a parallelogram. Oops, that's already on there. Parallelogram and triangle are on there, but what's not is the rectangle, the square, and the trapezoid. Now the rectangle and square are parallelograms, so you will see that area equals base times height. It's just for the rectangle, since the base and the height are given perpendicular, we typically refer to them as length and width. Where in the square, since the sides are the same, that would be S and that's S, we typically refer to that as S times S, which is um, side square. So what about other polygons, such as the pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, etc.? How do we find the area of these polygons? Well, we're specifically going to focus, and you're only responsible for knowing, how to find the area of a regular polygon, which means um, that all sides and all angles are congruent. The first bullet underneath recall it says the center of a regular polygon is equidistant from the vertices. So let's take a look. The center of the polygon is here, and here are the, in this case, one, two, three, four, five vertices. So we have a pentagon. If it's equidistant, we can take our compass, put it at the center. Remove this in. And if it's the same distance, I can look at that as the radius of a circle. So I should be able to draw a circle that goes through all five vertices of the pentagon. So the next sentence, this distance from the center of the polygon to a vertice is the radius of a circle. Now this circle is circumscribed about that pentagon, which means to be drawn around. So the pentagon is within the circle um, and not the circle within the pentagon. So this arrow we know is the radius. Next bullet says the distance from the center to a side is called an blank, which is the altitude of an blank triangle formed by two adjacent radii. So this distance from the center to a side of the polygon, so here's the side of the polygon, that is called an apothem. A-P-O-T-H-E-M. Now that's the altitude of this triangle. So we can put in the right angle because an altitude is drawn perpendicular to the side that it is drawn to. Well because from the center to a vertice is a radii, this side of the triangle is a radii, and this side of the triangle is a radii because it's drawn to those vertices. So these two sides of the triangle are congruent, and that is an isosceles triangle. 
as an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. The next bullet, it says the central angle of a regular polygon is also formed by these two radii. Its measure is equal to 360 divided by blank or blank. So the angle formed by two radii, that's this angle right here at the center. So this is a central angle. And the measure of that angle, we know there's a total of 360 degrees. Okay, so to find the measure of that angle, we divide it by the number of sides the polygon has. So its measure is equal to 360 divided by n, where n equals the number of sides. So we have a five-sided polygon, which is a pentagon, and we have one, two, three, whoops, one, two, three, four, five angles. Five sides, the number of sides matches the number of central angles. And last, the number of sides of a polygon has blank the number of triangles form, which blank the number of arcs form. So the number of sides of a polygon, how does that relate to the number of triangles? Well, we have five sides and we have one, two, three, four, five triangles within the polygon. So it equals the number of triangles formed, which also equals the number of arcs formed. Now the arcs go, it's part of the circle from one verse to the other. So we have one, two, three, four, five arcs. So it also equals the number of arcs that are formed. So in degrees, the measure of an arc intercepted by a central angle blank the degree measure of the central angle. The degree measure of a central angle, so let's just focus on one, say this one. This central angle's measure is the same of the arc. So if this angle is 24 degrees, the arc is also 24 degrees. So it's equal to. So using triangles, we can calculate the area of any regular n-gon, where n is the number of sides. So the first thing you do, the steps are there. Step one, two, and three. The first step is to take and break up your polygon into triangles. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides, we should have seven triangles. And you draw the radii of the circle that would be formed by connecting or drawing it from the center through each radii. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you break it up into the number of triangles and then find the area of one of the triangles. Okay? And then multiply the area of one triangle by the number of triangles that you have. And to calculate the perimeter, we just do the number of sides times the length of each side of your polygon. So as a formula, where n equals the number of sides of the number of triangles, you just take the area of one triangle and multiply it by n. So that's going to give you the area of the whole polygon. So let's look at the first example. The first example just says to find the perimeter. So in order to find the perimeter, we need to know what the length of each side is, as perimeter is the distance around the outside of a figure. It said it's regular, so each side is the same, and we actually don't need the apothem for perimeter. Well, we could add the perimeter up, the number of sides that it has, and this is an eight-sided figure, 
or an octagon. Or we could simply just take the length of each side, which is 12, and multiply it by the number of sides. So our perimeter is 96. And since we aren't provided with a unit of measurement, we're just going to put units. Number two says if the perimeter of a regular polygon is 97.3, find the length of a side. So I'm going to say that the length of a side is S. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. Again, all that are S. So I know that seven times some number gives me 97.3. Divide 97.3 by seven, and we have a side length of 13.9 units. Now into area. Find the area of the regular polygon. So we need to look at one of the triangles. So I'm going to use this apothem. Okay. I know this side here is 10. So this side here is 10 because it's regular and all sides are the same. And we're going to find the area of that one triangle. So the area of the one triangle would be 1 half base times height, so 10 times 5 radical 3. Well, half of 10 is 5, and 5 times 5 radical 3. It didn't say to round, so everything needs to be left in exact form. Okay, so when we multiply our radical term times a non-radical term, you simply just multiply the coefficient out front times the 5, so this would be 25 radical 3. But the area of the polygon, okay, is the number of triangles times the area of one. So we have one triangle, two triangles, three, four, five, six. So it's actually this. I'm looking at the area of a polygon times six. So 25 radical three times six. And as I mentioned, you just multiply the coefficient out front of the radical times 6, and the area would be 150. Keep the radical 3 units. But then we're talking about area, so it's going to be square units. Number 4 is given the area, find the length of the apothem. So let's call the apothem here A. And since it's regular, this side would also be 2.2 and let's focus on that triangle. So we have one, two, three, four, five triangles as we have a pentagon and we know that to find the area of a pentagon it's five times the area of a triangle. So if the area is 82.5 that's equal to five times one half base times height. So one half of 2.2 .2 times A. Okay, so 82.5. Five times a half times 2.2 .2 is five and a half. Divided by five and a half, and A is 15. So the length of the apothem is 15 and we are provided with the unit so centimeters. Finding perimeter and area of polygons in the coordinate plane. So the endpoints of one side of a regular hexagon are 1, 4, and 7, negative 4. So I'm going to draw a hexagon. It's supposed to be regular, so all sides are supposed to be the same length, but as I've mentioned before, your drawings don't have to be to scale. So the endpoints of one side are 1, 4, and 7, negative 4. Well, since the x coordinates or y coordinates don't match, that is not a horizontal or vertical segment. So I'm going to use the distance formula to find the length. And remember the distance formula 
is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So in substituting, here are my two x values. So 7 minus 1 squared, so that would be 6 squared, which is 36, plus negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8 squared, would be 64. That gives us the square root of 100, which is 10. So the length of a side of our hexagon is 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So our perimeter is 60 units. Lastly, we have to find the area and perimeter of the triangle ABC to the nearest tenth. Well, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So you, you could look at the side of the triangle as a base. So this could be the base, but then the height needs to be drawn from the vertex perpendicular. Okay, so we could find the length of that, but is this intersecting at uh, this number here for sure, right in the corner of a box? We don't know. You could also look at this side as a base, and this is a sketch, just height perpendicular, or the third side. If you look at the slopes, the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. Um, without doing that, the easiest way to do this is to box in the triangle, since we don't have a horizontal or vertical base and height to count the squares. Okay, take a minute to count the dimensions, the squares for the dimensions of the rectangle. And I'm going to fill them in here. So from here to here is four, here to here five, here to here five. Well, I should have mentioned, um, I'm not finding the length of the whole side unless it's like this side here that I'm outlining, which is nine, because the process that we're going to do is we're going to take the area of the rectangle and subtract the area of this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. So when I take all of those triangles away, I have the area of the given triangle. So I'm going to call this triangle 1. So the area of triangle 1 is one half base times height. Well, because the sides of the right triangle were horizontal and vertical, we could just count the squares as we did. So one half of four times 11, half of four is two times 11 is 22. So let's say triangle two is right here. So that's one half of nine by six. Well, half of six that's even is three, and three times nine, 27. And then the area of triangle three, once again, they are all right triangles, is one half of five by five. Well, five times five is 25, and then half of 25 is 12.5. So the total area for the triangles is 61.5. So as I mentioned, we're gonna take the area of the rectangle which is 9 by 11. Uh, so the area, or let's actually see the area of triangle ABC equals 99 minus 61 and a half, which would be 37.5 square units. Now perimeter, so we just did area. Perimeter is going to be adding up the lengths of all four or three sides for the triangle. So this side AB, well since we already have the right triangles drawn, let's use this 
length is c and not use the distance formula and we'll do a squared plus b squared equals c squared so for a b it would be 4 squared plus 11 squared equals c squared so 4 squared is 16 plus 121 is 137 square root plus minus reject and we have a b equals the square root of 137 leave it as exact now until you go to type everything into the calculator um, so now AC, again looking that as the hypotenuse, would be 9 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. So for AC, it's 9 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. Well, 81 plus 36 is 117. Take the square root, and we have to have the plus minus reject. You don't have to do that with a distance formula, as we already derived that. And it's noting it's the positive value, so if you don't like the plus minus reject, then just use the distance formula. So the square root of 1, 17, is the length of AC. And then last, for BC, if that's the C, it'd be 5 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. Five squared is 25, 25 plus 25 is 50. Square root, um, so be plus minus radical 50, reject. So BC is just the square root of 50. So if you go to the graphing calculator and you type that in, the perm of the triangle, radical 137 plus radical 117 plus radical 50, we end up with 29.592.42155. To the nearest tenth, the perimeter of the triangle is approximately, and not equal, where the area was equal, is approximately 29.6 units. And that is it for today's notes.